Uh, poor Bert, where is he? Oh my god. I mean, for, for me at least, you know, as soon as I woke up, I was attached to Bert, and we would wipe off the rails and mop the decks. Yes, yes, I know. And I, I went to the bathroom behind the float, but there's some stories we don't have to tell. <laughs> but I was, you know, I was really young when I was on the boat, but my brother Patrick, who is significantly older than I am, <laughs> uh, took this boat to Europe with my father, so all the way down the coast and through the Panama Canal and the Caribbean and across the Atlantic and into Lisbon, and so I'm sure you have uh, some better tales to tell than I do. I have one great story. Come up. <laughs> Are these mics still hot? Here. <laughs> when uh, Jennifer's mother, Aisa, was about 13, we were out to see, and um, Aisa had some decals in her personal gear. Stick them, stick, stick them decals. You understand? Tony, look at me. And so my dad got one of these decals and stuck it on the bulkhead. And then he goes, Aisha, what is this? She had nothing to do with it, he did it. But he was like blaming her for doing this. She started crying and broke down. Well, that is the dirtiest trick. It's like a John Ford trick. Hello. Hello. I'd like to hear about the crossing. Because this, this was a converted World War II. This was a minesweeper from World War II. And my father bought it from Max Wyman up in the Pacific Northwest. I think Max owned uh, a fleet of tugboats that used to pull the log rafts down into town from wherever they were logging. And uh, this was a surplus boat that Max bought. My dad bought it and brought it down here right after I was born, I think. And they uh, did some of the carpentry and turned it into a pleasure vessel. And then, was it before that that you guys went to Europe or was it 1964? This, this boat is 132 feet long, 136 feet long, yeah. But when you get out there in the Atlantic, the swells are like 150 feet. And we were, we were bouncing around like uh, a cork. It was the scariest thing in the world. I remember when he came back, he put all that uh, weight, he put like 50,000 pounds in the keel to hold the boat down. Now they've got these great gyros that keep everything flat. I got seasick in here, just rocking in here. But uh, it was uh, it was a rough cruise. But once you once we got across to the Canaries and the uh, Grecian Islands, I was 24 years old. You think I had any fun? <laughs> Marisa, well, I can tell you one story. It's a bad story for me. <laughs> Marisa's on this boat. <laughs> This one's with them. She don't love you. She's <laughs> love me like the wild, wild. Anyway, this little one was in Catalina with us. She had a girlfriend, and there was, you know, lots of ropes laying around the top deck to tie in the dinghies. And I don't know if it was my idea. I think it was your idea to wrap them up like mummies oh, yeah, in the in rope. <laughs> so we wrapped them up like mummies. And then did you say like dad help or something like that? You thought it would be funny to like hog tie me. No, 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 you're on the deck. Anyway, we wrapped them up like, you know, dummies in this, like, giant rope. And my father came up and saw that and just lost it. And I remember he had these, you know, giant fingers, giant forms, giant wrists. Uh, and he got my head in between his forearms. And I just remember, like, bouncing back and forth. 
It was the only time he ever like physically shook me. But every other time I got in trouble, it was just sort of a look or something verbal. But that time I got kind of bonked around a little bit, and I was trying to explain that it was it wasn't uh, there was no malintent in this uh, roping anyway. Okay. Their feedback. Okay, I, I just want to give it. A, a, we talked about Bert earlier, and Bert was like, he was our like, Bert, we want to go skiing. Bert, we want to go rafting. Bert, we want to go on the boat ride. Bert, we want this. We want that. Bert, we want a popsicle. Bert, and and, and Bert was like, I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna take my lunch, and I'm like, I'm gonna find you, and he like, he'd go hide, and I would like seriously find him and be like, no, 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 we're like. You would, yeah. No, he's like, leave me alone, leave me alone, get out of here. And Billy Sweat, our our chef, well, what would he say? He'd say like, he'd be like, get out of here. He was like, he had this. <laughs> and my mother, look at her now. She was like that perfect, pristine on the. Back here, before this was here, there was a beautiful, we called it the Hikie, right? Yeah. Hikie. And she had her big hat, and she was so smart. Back before we had blocked the blaze and we were trying to prevent sun cancer, she was so smart. She was wrapped up with her beautiful hat and her big glasses, and she has the most beautiful skin to this day because she knew back then about the. Oh, per perfect daughter. You're going to have a daughter, you're going to have some. <laughs> right? Right? You can pay me later. No. So anyway, I, I, every time I dream about my dad, we're on this ship, like in my dreams. We had so much fun um, growing up as a family here and really having quality time together. And, and I thank Bert for a lot of that. Thank you. And I was Carmela's age, jumping off. She jumps off the pier, so. And thank you for Jennifer and Naomi and Hannah for coming out tonight. And thank you to Mia and the home goers for doing this. We really appreciate it. Bert, do you want to come tell a story or two? Yes, he does. Bert. Mama, you want to come up here? Here. Watch, watch the chords. It was just such a wonderful trip. I mean, to leave Newport Beach, go all the way down to the Panama Canal, then take about five days crossing the canal, and um, then we ended up at the Sublas Islands, which is on the Atlantic side of Panama, and uh, then we were going to take the well, goes all the way to Lisbon. But anyway, Duke didn't want us to, didn't want me and the kid, kids to cross after we got to Bermuda. So anyway, we got to Bermuda. I flew uh, with Aris and Ethan back home. And then he says, in five days, the wild goose will be, will be reaching the Azores. So it's going to be five to six days that I'm not going to call you on the phone, you're not going to hear from us. Well, the first day was fine. The second day, I was a little worried. The third day, I'm about to panic. The fourth day, and you know, no, no phone call, no nothing. I'm sitting there just looking at the phone. The fifth day came by, no phone call. The sixth day came back, the phone rang. <laughs> I picked it up and he says, hi, honey. We we are at the Azores. And then I started to cry and I couldn't talk. <laughs> I was just so happy that they had finally, you know, spent five to six days 
in this grotty Atlantic in this Patrick. <laughs> so anyway, um, then he says, we have a couple of days, we're going to be in Lisbon, and then you can fly over with the children. So that was it. Two days later, I got on the, on the plane with my kids. I think, um, uh, were you there? I was the one he was two. Anyway, I remember um, Melinda being there, Patrick being there, Ethan being there, Aisa, and uh, then we spent like three more years on board of the Wild Goose. Our last place that we went to was Portofino, and then they called him up and they said, okay, time to come back to work. So. Back to about three, we went and he was making a movie called Circus World. And uh, it was just wonderful, you know, to, when you leave your husband for five days, you start to panic. So anyway, it was a wonderful love story and he was a beautiful man. Yeah. And I always be grateful for my magnificent children grandchildren, stepchildren, stepchildren and all my friends. I love you all. Thank you for being here. Seriously, she tells stories. I'm like, oh, you have to like, you have to break this down and record it like, oh, oh yeah, oh, that's Marilyn Monroe. You know what? I remember when she just had no makeup on and we took a picture and she was like, whoa, and she was like so pretty and I couldn't believe she had no makeup on, but she took this great picture. Like, you have these stories about all of these legends. Elizabeth Taylor, right? So anyway, fascinating life. Is your mic working or do you want this one? Testing, testing. Okay.